Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And I just got a quick video today. And for those that own the Valve King amplifiers, whether it be the combo 1x12, 2x12, or the 100 watt head, uh, this is the Mark II version. So it's going to have a different face that's not the one with the wings. You might be running into some problems with the XLR DI out, possibly even the USB recording. And I'm going to show you why that is happening and how to fix it. I'll get right into the problem that you're hearing, and that is it. That is a ground loop that you're hearing through the speakers. And you wouldn't really notice it if you had an XLR connected to the mixer or anything, go say, to the front of the house. Because what's happening is this patch board behind here has got a problem. It is isolated from the chassis ground, and it's going to cause that sound. And over here is your ground lift switch, and all that does is that it takes pin one and lifts it from the chassis just to prevent any kind of ground loops connected if you have it connected to a mixer. And this patch board has isolated jacks here. It's got the plastic shaft here with a metal nut. So there's no continuity from the shafts over to the board for chassis ground. And that is the main issue going on here. I have my meter connected to pin one and chassis ground here. And as you can see, you're getting about a nine kilo ohm resistance here. And that is not good. We want it to be zero ohms because that high impedance is actually what is causing the problem that you hear. So in order to solve this properly, what I've done just to show you that the proof of concept works, I have a ground wire from the chassis. And then over here, according to the schematics, there are no isolation transformers for this amplifier on the XLR DI out, but that component exists. This is an isolation transformer. The C is the positive, and then this connection right here goes straight to pin one. Now, because we have that nine kilo ohm resistance, if I go and I short that to chassis ground, it goes away. So the solution for fixing that sound is simply to connect that lead to chassis ground. We're gonna just run a very short jumper wire to one of the mounting screws here, to one of the switches that has continuity to chassis ground, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And now it's silent as can be, and you see that it is a very low ohm potential. Now I can disable this by pressing the ground lift switch, and that's exactly what it should do. So I am happy with that functionality. So we'll just run a jumper wire to fix that. And here's the modification done. All I did was add a small jumper wire to the bare ground chassis and run it over here to this side of that isolation transformer and put some hot glue to keep it in place. And that should solve our issue. I'm just gonna take it off standby and we'll double check that the noise is gone. Okay, the standby is off. We have the clean channel on and the lead clean and lead we have a low ohm potential if I press the ground lift switch then it disables the pin one which is what we want and then if I re-engage it it goes back to a low ohm potential so that solves it and we have this uh, right side up again, and the only one thing I wanted to do before I button this back up and put it back in its case is to check the bias of the power tubes. Good thing I did, because each of these valves were running extremely hot at around 51 to 52 milliamps per tube. That is way too hot. Uh, thankfully, the, the Mark IIs have the bias adjustment pot right here. You just stick a little flathead screwdriver in there, and then with the bias probe, you can... Uh, adjust it accordingly. So the plate voltage is 462 volts when I measured it under load, everything powered up. My wall power is anywhere from 120 to 122, it's pretty stable. And we're looking at, I went on the side of more conservative, so about 40 milliamps per tube. And that's pretty good. That's a little over 60% dissipation. You can go as high as 70%. That's what they recommend. Anything more than that, then you're going to start to see some mild red plating, which if you see in this picture, 
uh, I took one at night and you can see that one of them was starting to red plate slightly. So bringing the bias down a bit so we are running a tad bit cooler, that solved that problem. And now I think we're ready to put this all back together. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Here is the amplifier all put back together. I did polish up the Tolex here, and I'm just in the other room at the moment. A uh, little minor scratching and some dents from the road rash, but nothing bad at all. This is, again, from 2013. Uh, I will definitely be playing this in another video, but I wanted to wrap things up here. Uh, great head, and hope to be able to play it and really enjoy it. So thanks again. And we'll catch you on the next video.